Hello, once again, it's Christine, and um, I'm coming to you from the Lakeside Church, Toronto, Canada, in another episode of the Arts and Skills series. Welcome, welcome. We are honored that you are taking the time out to spend with us, and um, hopefully, uh, you will get something from um, today's session. We are going to do something with a lot of bottles, recycling all kinds of bottles. So I have various ones here that um, I've collected from friends and family and what was in the garage. And um, yeah, I... I'm going to do a few today, even though I think this might be something I would continue with. So, hope you're going to enjoy it. We are um, going to, I'm going to uh, do a little devotion. Um, this one is very personal because I um, decided that I would um, write something myself that um was to go along with this. So the um, the poem that I wrote, that actually my creative writing uh, lead, Nicole, says it's more like prose, which I'm glad because I want to um, explore different writing styles. So um, here is uh, the presentation of he bottles our tears. He bottles our tears. We shed many tears in a lifetime. The first when this world we come in. A world that is full of great problems. A world that is full of great sin. Tears make occur for happy times. A wedding as a couple make vows together. Declaring the love and the joy they have found as they journey this life with each other. Oh, when we are so touched as our children they grow and the many accomplishments they achieve. With each passing year as adulthood comes and we look back and we just can't believe. That's exactly where I am at the moment with my son. But tears will be shed when life struggles they come disappointments, pain, and despair. Don't have what we want or what we think that we need, or maybe there's just no one to care. Or our body falls ill and sickness is here. This pain will not leave us alone. Or someone we love is suddenly gone because the Lord has called them home. Our tears, they are many shed over the years, but our Lord, he experienced them too. Disappointment he saw when his friends turned away Rejected, he bore it alone. He felt sorrow and loss. His body ripped to shreds, a sacrifice for me and for you. He experienced the same and he shed his own tears. But our tears, he has bottled them all. He has shed in my sorrows and will wipe them away. 
in joy one day at his feet i will fall and so that is my poem today or my prose today that talks about bottling of our tears jesus bottles our tears With our first bottle this little one here i'm going to create a sea glass effect by using Elmer's glue and some, um, what do they call these? Food coloring. I had a mental block there. And I'm going to create um, something that I am going to try to put a photograph on. So let's just start with the effect of the sea glass. So for this, we need about a tablespoon or so, depends on how much you're going to use. And we're just gonna mix that together. I love this song, Keep Me in the Valley and Hide Me from the Rain. My God is awesome. He heals me when I'm broken. I'm just gonna put gloves on. Strength where I've been weakened. And forever he will reign. Just turn that. I might put more than one coat on because you can see the need to let it dry and then put again okay and then we'll come back to this one so whilst we're in the midst of drying times with the other bottles let's start another one so here this one i'm actually going to paint a scene on and um we're gonna see where we go with that so first of all i have a sponge so you could get any uh kind of sponge and black paint and we're going to create a night sky with this by just starting to dab all over three quarters of the top of the bottle. So I'll just continue all the way down and all the way around to dab three quarters of the way down 
and I'm going to leave a middle bit because I, I want to try to change the color of the sky. And also we're going to make um, a little darkness down here. So let's continue with that. I'll finish this and then come back to you with the finished product of what I have done with the first part of this project. After doing my black on the bottom and mostly the top because this is the night sky, I'm now doing blue in the middle third and I want some of it to kind of mix. You can see there's different shades of here. Um, just by dabbing it lightly, I want the black and the blue to kind of mix on the edges and blend somewhat so that we can make it look like some kind of sky. So I just want to show you where I'm at with this and then we're going to let it dry and move on with painting something on, on that area. So now you can see the effect of my background and I've tried to smudge it so that the sky looks really dark but smoky. And um, my plan is to, I've used a pencil to draw in the line of a tree so that I can now start to paint it. You can see some of the branches that are here. And then I am going to start out. I, I was a little bit heavy here, so this is one thing to bear in mind. Try not to be too heavy when you are using the pencil because you'll take off a layer of your, um, your uh, paint. But this is now going to be my moon. So I'm going to start out with my moon. I have various paint brushes here. So let's start. But just by painting the circle. So if you do scratch it out, you can easily just go over it. So here I am doing my moon on my smoky night sky. Let's do it more circular. And it's okay if you have these streaks, which I'm going to show you like this, because that's exactly how your moon should be. It shouldn't be solid. There should be marks on it like this. So that's the moon in the sky. So I'm going to now create some very tiny little dots for the stars all over. I think I might need some smaller bits, but um, one of the other ways you can do it, of course, is to flick your brush. If you have enough paint on your brush. Okay, so now I'm using the fan brush and I am just going to flick. There we go. So that our sky looks more realistic with some bigger stars inside. So we can just do this all the way around so that our sky looks realistic and I do just want to show you another thing I'm just going to dry brush um, so you want to, the brush not to be too wet and you can see I've just gone around it just to make this effect of the moon Now 
make sure your brush is almost dry and then you circle around to make that effect on your mane. How's that? Okay, so let's start on the tree. So I've drawn on my tree. Just by making black lines. And now I'm just adding some blossoms just by lightly dabbing. As if they're blowing in the wind. And you can see I just made the line of a swing. I'm not so sure if I'm going to attempt to put someone on it, but we'll see. Um, but here's my night sky with the cherry blossom tree. the moon so I'm gonna fill in I think these areas here a little bit so that it looks a little fuller but amazing what you can do with a bottle and what I'm suggesting is maybe take a, a um, a painting that you've already done um, in the past and this time use the bottle as your canvas just want to show you what you can do so here's the finished product of my painted um, scene, night scene. I'll just turn it. I did, I did attempt the little girl because I had drawn it before and one of the ones that Joan had uh, done with us. So there's my painted bottle night scene. So I just keep turning around and now I'm gonna show you how to finish off another simple technique with dots and then we will display all of them um, that we've created here's my third bottle which i painted and i painted it halfway up with acrylic paint or three quarters of the way up with two different colors so i'm trying to keep the same color scheme for all three bottles but do them all very differently so now i'm going to paint some flowers in the middle of this so um, i've chosen to do it with white and pink and purple and white so i have a very small brush here is my brush and I am going to, let me show you, use one side with white so I took one side with white and we will do the other half with pink so I have a combination on my brush and then I will hold my um, bottle and press it on. Actually, I'm going to turn the brush outwards, if you can see here. And I'm going to do this and this. I think I need more white. And this and this and this. So I've got five 
little spots and then I'm going to touch my brush again in the same spots with the pink and white and just randomly okay press it down press it down press it down press it down and press it down oh yes there we go so I've got some flowers that are starting to be created with two different colors and you can go on the lower part just we're trying to just do it in the middle around here so we'll just choose a spot and make the petal and I'm using five And my petals don't have to be exactly the same. They just need to be random and I'm just gonna continue around the middle of the bottom. So here we are working our way around the bottle. I'm going to do another one again to show you. And this time I'm just doing it the same way that the brush is turned. So I'll make one dot I'll make another one to the side, another one. Oh, I pressed too hard on that one, but that's okay. And there's our flower. Dip our paint again. One side, then the other side, turning it over. And then just putting it on your bottle. Let's go lower down this time. Two, three, four, and five. So I'll continue all the way around until I'm done. Back to this bottle I'll just show you where we are at so I want to with the q-tip just put my little dots in the very center of some of the flowers just to make them stand out a little more just a light dot particularly where I can see the green. I think it just emphasizes the flower just a little bit more. So you can see what I'm doing. Just going around in the middle. Just so that they look more like flowers. I have to paint over these areas where I put my dirty fingers, but you get the idea. Now I'm using the tip again of the q-tip in white just to try to make some little dark things in between that are like gypsophila flowers so i'm spreading them all around To make this effect.
So for this one, I am now going to show you how I made this effect on the bottle. We first had the frosting that we created. So if your bottle is not frosted or you um, want to make your own frosting, um, you can follow the instructions of the one that I did with the glitter. But I have kept this side empty just to show you how I created this effect on this side. Now, I did use um, Q-tips to be able to do the flowers, which is what I'm going to show you first. Um, but I decided perhaps I would get a more uniform effect if I used the flat tip of a pencil. So let's see what happens with this. So you can see I have all my colors here that I used and we'll start with just the white because we are doing the tip first. So this is a random pattern. So I'm going to touch the white, cover the tip and pick anywhere that I need to, to put it. So I'm going to try and cover the imperfections and look, I have just put one little dot here and one little dot here. I think each time you're going to have to cover it. And I think actually that's a little bit better. So it's random wherever you want your dots to be. And remember, you need to space it so that you can put the rest of the flower around it. So I'm going to do this in stages. So I will do my white dots first and make sure that they have space that I can continue with my flower effect. Oh, I forgot I did some grass down here, so I guess you don't need the flowers to go all the way to the base, but you know, sometimes flowers are growing in the grass anyway. So here we go. So you can see I've just randomly placed the flower center and you can go all the way up the bottle if you wish. Okay, so we'll let that dry and then I'll come back. Now I'm going to clean off my tip and just pick a color on the tip of the pencil if you can see and then I'll choose a place to put my flower and make four cir five circles. I think flowers are better if you can make five or seven petals as you go around. I'm finding it easier with the pencil to be honest and it doesn't matter if your flowers even or not even um, because flowers are not perfect but you can see what I'm doing and I'm gonna pick another one lower down so again just I'm just making sure I don't have that color close so I probably do this one here each time I pick up my paint and then I make my dot as I go all the way around. So try to make either five or seven flowers, petals. And you can go over it more than once and there you can see we're starting to form our petals so I'm just gonna continue using different my different color themes 
now I've shown you how to do that bit and I'll finish off uh, the flowers that I have here. So I'm just continuing. I think my grass is all different. Depending on what angle, or what angle you use, your grass can go in all directions. And I'm just finishing off and trying to uniform a little bit the fact that I have a different stroke, it seems, than I did when I first did it. But basically, you're using three different colors of green to be able to create the grass at the bottom. And you're trying to make it as if it's blowing in the wind. so I think I'll let that dry for a bit and then my last will be to put in the the dots which are actually something else so I'll let that one dry and I will move back to one of our other bottles. Now the little drop of glue in the center of the white. Oh. Because I'm going to use my leftover black drills from diamond painting so if you don't diamond paint that's okay you can just use paint with a very fine brush and uh, put your little black dot in the center just to emphasize so I'm going to put this little drop of paint on all of my flowers that don't have a center and I'm going to let it half dry so that they don't slip off and they will easily adhere so i'll do this other bottle which i've decided that i will have the same effect give them a little black center with my leftover drills so if you diamond paint, you know how you can um, continue by picking this up with one of your applicators. I think I need some wax on it. So you pick it up with your applicator and just put it on the center. So that's what I'm going to do as I finish this little project. Continue with my dots, allow them to half dry. And then I will put on the black drills to emphasize my flowers. So after I've done this, I will show you the finished products of all of my recycled bottles and display them all together in the night.
So first I would like to demonstrate what the photo glass looks like with sea glass and with the lights uh, that have been put in it. So let's turn it on. So you can see it looks really nice um, when you have a either clear or a frosted glass and then you can put the photo on it becomes a, a sentimental kind of a lamp that um, you can keep some special memories or show your family a nice picture of your family and um, just put it somewhere where you know it, it it becomes a remembrance so i just wanted to show you this one first before i move the lights over to the other bottles so here is now the finished products of some of the bottles that i have made i actually plan to do more but <laughs> i think that this is enough um you can see um each one this was my sea glass one faux sea glass with a little bit of glitter and i put a picture of my mother on it so this is something that you can do just glue a picture on a bottle and then we have this one which is flowers in two colors just go close and we created just these little petals just very easily oh i missed a few of the the black areas but we'll put that in and then this one was the bottle that i had found on the shelf and so all i did was stick some uh the saw butterflies on it and add a little bit of glitter so again i'm just giving you some ideas of what you can do with your own bottles and then of course we have i'm gonna go with this one next my nighttime painted bottle which i think turned out really nicely too so if you want to you can paint a picture on your bottle and then of course the sea glass that we have here which has the simple version of just making flowers with a pen top or a q-tip so um, here is our other version so i'm hoping that you enjoyed that um, i'm giving you the view of all the bottles now but what i intend to do is oh sorry <laughs> put my finger right over the uh, thing what i intend to do is show you this thing which i got at the dollar store which has some very small lights in it and um, this is a lighted cock so i'm now going to turn off the lights and put it in some of the bottles so that you can see so the non-painted ones i'm going to put it in so that you can see the effect of having the uh, lighted corks in the bottle so that you can create your own lamp so let's now look at our last one, which is our petals and little flower bottles with clear frosted glass. And look at how pretty that is. So I love the effect of these bottles that can create a beautiful lamp, either a memory just some whimsy, 
some art, floral art, picture art, and some um, colorful art. So I hope that you enjoyed this project. I know it took a little bit longer because I've done so many different types. And so there are quite a few uh, videos to go along with it. But um, collect your own. Be creative with your own. I've given you a few ideas. Um, I was doing stained glass as well. But <laughs> I didn't finish the stained glass. But um, any case, we've done stained glass in the past. So um, just be creative with yours and maybe you can make a beautiful gift for someone in the lights, the lighted um, bottle. And remember that Jesus bottles all of our tears, everything that we go through, all of the trials and the tribulations, the ups and the downs, the celebrations, the highs, the lows, all of it all, every tear he bottles and he will wipe them away one day when we see him. So have a blessed night and um, enjoy. God bless you.